this is Marcia Iwasaki from the Office of Arts and Culture. And Alicia Johnson from the Office of Arts and Culture. And we're here to thank you for participating in our public art week. So what we'll be talking about today is why is public art different from your studio practice? And is public art real? We'll be talking about how to apply for the actual workshop, what we're looking for, and what makes a strong application. So what is public art? I found this really great uh, quote from Forecast Public Art, and they published Public Art Review. The classic images evoked by the phrase public art are usually of static bronze and monolithic stone structures. While these images of grand works of metal and stone have a well-established place in the artistic lexicon, they only give us a, a portion of what is regarded as contemporary public art. As all artistic definitions expand, contract, and evolve over time, so has the contemporary view of public art. Today, public art has moved beyond that of permanence and solidity, seeking to engage the community in a manner that, while not excluding the methods of the past, brings them to life as a part of the community. Contemporary public art is not simply an aspect of the landscape, expanding to explain ideas of personal and community engagement. The context and recontextualization of place and formatting the exchange of ideas and identity within a community. And this really speaks to the work that Art Office does. We really think of public art as an asset to our community and a way of community building. Um, so once again, public art can be dance, can be performance, it can be temporary art, it can be so many different things. And that's what's really exciting about the field is it's constantly changing. So why does the city invest in public art? The City of Seattle's public art program started in 1973, and it was the second public art program in the United States. And it's really exciting because what we're saying is that we believe that all um, residents of Seattle um, deserve to have art in the public realm as part of their experience. So when you're walking down the street, you might experience something um, on a building, on a sidewalk, and all of that really um, makes our life more rich. Um, and better. And so we also want those artworks to reflect all the different people that live in our communities. Why public art would count? The Office of Arts and Culture is invested in training the next generation of public artists and we have been doing this initially in 2003 when we had a program called public art roster for emerging public artists and it was a 10-week series of lessons we couldn't do it again for a number of years but we began again in 2015 in a condensed version for two intensive days that was held in the spring beginning in 2015 we did it again in 2016, and we're lucky to be able to do it again in 2017. It is not an annual workshop, so if you are very interested in the field of public art, we really encourage you to apply now. You will learn many things about the field of public art when you are able to come to the Public Art Bootcamp. Some of the topics include the bulleted items you see above, going from temporary to permanent artworks, portable works, which is a type of artwork that is moved from one room to another. You'll see examples of work samples, images, and letters of interest, which are typically the three things that are asked for when you apply for public artworks in any program across the country. We'll talk about different types of selection processes, how to work with architects, community members, city staff, and so on. We'll also show you examples of contracts, budgets, materials, and timelines. Fabrication and installation will also be discussed, along with things such as using anti-graffiti guard on no matter what type of material 
you end up making your art, um, whether it's temporary or The application for Public Art Bootcamp 2017 is open now. The deadline to apply is December 15th at 11 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is no exceptions to this. We highly, highly recommend that you work on your application starting now and submit it before this deadline. There are always people who wait too long and then there are technical difficulties that happen at the last minute. We are not able to extend any exceptions to this rule. You will find out whether or not you were accepted to the boot camp by January 20th of 2017. It's important to note that the two Saturdays of boot camp are February 18th and Saturday. So how do you know if you are eligible to apply? Do you live in Washington or Oregon? Do you have a track record of making art? And by track record, we mean, um, have you had an exhibition somewhere before? Have you shown at a gallery? Have you shown at a co-op space? Have you um, installed your own exhibition in a coffee shop or retail space? Those mean, if you've done any one of those things, that means you have the experience um, that you need to be ready to move on to the next level. So that's what we mean by having a track record of making art. If you haven't had an installation yet, then you're not ready probably to apply for public art boot camp. Do you have an interest in making art in public places? You, when you have to be interested. And again, have you never received a commission over $5,000? We have increased those from previ previous years to $5,000. So the application requirements. We require a resume of your past exhibitions. Um, please don't go over two pages. Um, and then your letter of interest. This is really important. This is one of the main things the panelists will be looking at to see whether or not you'll be accepted into the program. Um, we accept up to 30 artists to be part of the program. Um, the reason it's a competitive process is that we can only let 30 artists in. And um, if it was a first come, first serve, it wouldn't, it's not necessarily an equitable process. So you, we want to really let artists in that are ready for the next stage of their career. So this is your opportunity to really tell the panel why you think that you're ready, why you want to do work in the public realm. So if you're a 3D artist and you think your work would translate into permanent materials or larger scale materials, or if you're a 2D artist and you think your work would translate into permanent materials, talk about it there. Really, um, this should be a well thought out letter. Eight images of your past work. You really want to use your best images, um, no text in your slides, no compilations of multiple images on your slide. And if you don't have eight images, you can use a detail of an image um, to get that eight. Image identification list. This is a great opportunity to expand on um, some of the work that you've done. So you can go into each one of those artworks. You have 500 characters. Talk about whether or not you worked as a team, whether or not you were the person who fabricated an artwork for somebody else, whether So the next is the selection criteria. So once again, the panel is going to be looking at the strength and artistic vision of your past work, your creativity of approach, your letter of interest. Again, that piece is really, really important. Your resume, your experience with previous art exhibitions and projects. So even if you didn't do an art exhibition, if there's a, some other project you worked with some friends on, you can put that in there and talk about that in your slides. And we do want to highlight that 
priority will be given to artists who have experience um, working with residents from historically underrepresented communities, including communities of color and their So all of our public art calls are on CAFE, and CAFE stands for Call for Entry. So if you've never applied for a public art call on CAFE, you're going to want to go to www.callforentry.org, and you'll see that website right at the top. And it says it's recommended that you use the Mozilla browser. That will um, make things less complicated. You'll have less glitches if you use the Mozilla browser. So you'll also, if you don't already have an account, you will register, get yourself signed up, and create an account. So you'll go into the search um, function of CAFE. You'll put in City of Seattle as a keyword. And then you can see here, it'll say City of Seattle, and it'll have list all our different calls. So this is an example of a call that we did in 2015. So this year, uh, the others will say 2017 Public Art Weekend. So here you will see um, what your application might look like, an example. So this is that call from 2015, but it will say uh, 2017 Public Art Weekend here. And these are the fields that you'll put in all your information, buyer of interest, res resume, etc. It's best to go into Notebook or Word, whatever you have, um, and write your text first. Make sure that it's not over the character limit, and then copy and paste it into CAFE. You'll have less problems that way. Sometimes if you write it in CAFE, there's glitches, and so it's best for you to write it somewhere else and paste it in. So remember that CAFE is a great resource. You go to their help page, they have a frequently asked questions index. But also, if you're still having issues, this is why it's great to not waste time. So here is just also another um, example of what the application will look like. More of it, you'll add your images to the application here at the end, and you don't want to forget to save your work. And now here are some helpful application tips for really any of our calls on CAFE. So again, use Mozilla Firefox as your browser. Don't wait until the last minute. We cannot say that enough. Have another set of eyes look over your application materials. Preview your submissions before hitting the submit button. The application text boxes only accept plain text. So that's what we were talking about in uh, doing your application in Notepad or Word first. Then copy and paste it into the fields. Take advantage of CAFE's help page, and Google Search is a great resource for any technical questions. If you are a member of the boot camp for 2017, you will have the opportunity to apply for temporary art projects that happen in summer of 2017 for either Art Interruptions, which is a temporary artwork project that happens in a neighborhood greenway yet to be determined, or for the Seattle Center Sculpture Walk. In each of the cases, we selected seven artists, and we will quickly show you a series of artworks. You'll see the name of the artist in the bottom corner, along with the title of their artworks, and you can see more about these temporary artworks on our website for more.
So the last series of pictures came from the Seattle Center Sculpture Walk, and those were managed by Elishaba. We want to thank you, Elishaba and I, for listening to our very first video workshop. We hope you're still able to be excited about this project. It's a great boot camp opportunity. We highly encourage you to contact us if you have further questions, or look on our website for more information about this opportunity or other opportunities that you may be eligible for. Thank you very much, and hope to see you see your application.